All right, so let's get started. And I'm going to share my screen with you. Let me know that you can see everything. Yes. We're good. All right, perfect, perfect. All right, so good morning, everyone. Today we are talking about scams and how we can avoid them. And um, I can tell you that I am not a senior, yet this is a topic that is of a big concern to me because I have aging parents and I'm always working very hard and trying to help them understand how to be smart and be prepared because even myself, I probably get a few phone calls a week about my taxes being not being done, about me owing money to some random agencies, me getting some kind of inheritance from Africa, you name it, and I probably have it. And of course, you know, other scam phone calls and scam mail, it's, it's quite a lot. So I hope that when we go through the workshop today and I give you some of these examples, with some of these tips, you're going to get a little bit more knowledgeable and um, a little bit better at handling some of these uh, really, some of them are really creative, and it's just a shame that the people are out there that, you know, they focus on, unfortunately, scamming other people, and that's why being educated and knowing how to watch out and keep yourself protected is so important. My name is Olga St. Pierre. I am a senior living specialist. I am a real estate advisor, and uh, we love being part of our community and being able to bring you some of this information and share this important information with you to help you because that is what we do for our community. Uh, just a little bit about what we do. We focus on working with clients in New Jersey and Pennsylvania for the last 14 years. I truly love what I do. And our mission is to be there to help you throughout your lifetime and your transitions as you move to potentially from one home to the other. As you know, it's not as simple. And when, while you are a homeowner and you're not making any moves, we are there right alongside with you, helping you being part of our community. And that also means that if you know someone that we can help, we do have an extensive network of uh, professionals that can help you and your friends and family move anywhere in the United States and Canada, because as you can imagine, moving is extremely stressful. And when you are part of our community, we help you with our concierge service. Think of us as Yellow Pages from A to Z. Anyone that you can think of that you may need help with, from contractors to professionals like attorneys and accountants and anyone else that you can think of, we probably have a few recommendations of the professionals that we have used personally, I have used, as well as other recommendations from our clients. Because whenever I talk to my clients, I always ask them, have you recently used anyone who is amazing at what they do, whether it's a plumber, a landscaper, an accountant, an attorney, or you know, different uh, focuses. And if they do, we take that information, we ask them, can we share this information so that way it can benefit others? So I always, I'm going to ask you the same question. If you can think of someone that was spectacular that you have worked with before, or maybe you're working with now, that you know is going to be a great addition to help others, please let us know. Uh, we're more than happy to add that because it is always a rotating door. And we're always looking for additional great people to add to our concierge service. All right, so let's get started. What we're talking about today are the facts about the scam industry, different types of scams. And I already mentioned some of them to you when we started uh, talking. How to avoid becoming a scam victim, some help options that are available out there, and what do I suggest that you do next? So that's that's what we're talking about. And I encourage you that if you have some questions, please jump in. You can unmute yourself. Or if you would rather wait until the end after we're done, I always have reserved time for questions and answers. We're always happy to talk about them. So here are some facts, and some of them can sound pretty scary. And I just want you to just as an overview to realize that it is not a a small issue, it is a really big challenge. And we're talking about billions and billions of dollars. And what's unfortunate is that 80% of this fraud is targeted towards 
are baby boomers. These are seniors who are 60 years and older. And the reason why is because seniors are not, in most cases, as knowledgeable and as savvy about technology using the computers. And that's what scammers are very good at. They, they almost like can smell the fear and the uncertainty and the discomfort. And of course, with every day, we see it all the time. These scammers are becoming more sophisticated and they're a lot more smarter. And unfortunately, because of the whole volume of just what's happening, a lot of many cases go unreported. And I can give you one example. I got a, a very official looking package from Pennsylvania Department of Revenue, which means that this is, has to do with taxes. And you, when you see that label in the top left corner, you start to get nervous to say, okay, what did I forget to do? What did I do incorrectly? And they were saying that how you know I owe because I did not report something and they were auditing my taxes for like five years ago. And this is how much I owe. And it looked very, very much official. And of course, when we called the, uh, the phone number for the Department of Revenue, they said, no, this is not us, please disregard. You know, it's very hard to do when you don't know maybe who to call. And what I ended up doing is going to our local police department and I showed this to them, I reported this and they're like, sure, you can file a police report, but it's not gonna go anywhere. He said, the, the police officer said, there's just so much of it that's happening. They just don't have the resources, the funds or the manpower to follow up and to dig deeper and to catch some of these people. And a lot of these scammers are also located outside of the United States because you know, right now the technology makes this all possible. So it's definitely scary. And that's why I think it's important to understand how some of this stuff works, how does this look and kind of what to, what to watch out for instead of making the first initial shocking, you know, like uh, having a shock and then potentially making the decisions and doing something that you're going to regret later. So let's talk about the actual types of scams that we see quite often. The most popular ones that you will see, and I get them all the time on my phone, are, you, are going to be your phone calls and messages. We also get text messages. So then they're most popular because there is no face-to-face -face interaction. People, those scammers will hide behind the veil of computers and there's really no paper trail. It's very hard to trace. There's a lot of the IRS cons that are happening where they will call and they'll, you know, where there's a recording that's saying the IRS is calling and that they say that you owe money. And then a lot of the times to keep an eye for is they will start asking you for personal information. And what you have to remember is that never happens, especially on the phone. No government agency is going to call you and ask you for personal information and initiate that phone call. A lot, most of the time, the correspondence is done through mail and it's official correspondence. Missed jury duty. There's personages that are going to call. Uh, robocalls happen all the time. I owe money apparently to every single government agency that's out there. Fake accident, kidnapping, calls from grandkids in trouble. This to me was just so shocking and distressing. I can't tell you. And that, that's one that I think is super important because this does not just have to do with money or something else. This has to do with your family. So it's important to take a breath, to hang up, and then to reach out to your family via the channels that you know of, right? The phone call and the email and to go see your family before acting on the threat or something that came through to you. Fake charity solicitation, fraudsters that are using phone numbers and area codes that are similar to yours, which is very pop, all, happens all the time because there's phone numbers available. You, you can get free phone numbers through uh, Google. So these are just some of the things that you're going to see if it's coming through phone calls or text messages. For text messages, please never respond or click on any links because that's how you get viruses and that's how those scammers are going to get access to your phone. What I always do is when you see it, take the time to read it and look at it. And if you're not sure about it, take a screenshot of the message and send it to someone that you know is more savvy with technology and ask that person, what do you think about this text message? Does that look real to you? So do some research, don't act right away, take the time 
to think this through. I think those are some of the most important things that I can suggest to you. And a lot of the times it's best sometimes not even to respond because you want to do some research first. Software, that happens too when you are visiting different websites and all of a sudden you get a pop-up and it says, there is a virus on your computer, click here to download and clean your computer, some kind of software. Don't ever do that because most of the time when it's coming from internet, it is not going to be helpful to you. Um, and also it's going to be remote access scams. They happen all the time. Unless you call someone that you trust, let's say you're having an issue and your computer is Dell and you're calling Dell support. And when you have that conversation, sometimes they do provide and they do recommend that you get a remote access and they guide you through and then it's all in secure way. That is very much different from, I am sitting on the computer right now teaching a class and talking to you and all of a sudden there's a pop-up on my web browser that says, hey, we need to get access to your computer because we see that there's a virus on it, okay? Nobody asked me about it. It is in, so just think about this before you react or you act on what you're seeing in front of you, okay? Email all the time. I have some examples for you. There's, I'm, I am a recipient of billions of dollars from Africa from some prints. And there's also very creative vari variations on this. It says, congratulations, you won a $30 gift card to Starbucks. And it could be as small as that, yet the goal for the scammers is when you click on whatever the link they send to you, they get access to your computer. And as you know, a lot, a, a lot of our computers have personal and private information. So I have some examples here for you so you can see. And what I encourage you to look for are a couple of things. So it says, oh, congratulations, you've been selected. Please confirm ASAP and we're gonna mail you a thousand dollar reward. But if you look and what you wanna look for is address where it's coming from. It is not Sam's Club because it has some really weird email address. And if you look at some of this, these addresses, if you, you know, it says Walmart at your Walmart's up, Dot com, you can tell that this is now a scam. And what I also suggest that you do is that if you want to also find out where the link is going to go to, if you were to hover over with your mouse or your pad over the link that is provided to you, you can do that mostly on your laptop, it will actually show you the address where it's going to. Most of the time, it is some really random and weird email or some kind of a file that has a, an extension at the end and you can jot it down and then do some research on it. However, most of the time, that's what you're going to see. It could look really, really legitimate. It could, be, it could look really very much from Walmart. And as you know, scammers could get very creative more and more to hide where they're coming from. So number one, don't act right away do some more research and ask someone that you know who is savvy at technology, what do they think about this and does this look real? Internet browsers, you're gonna get pop-ups all the time and I do get that. So again, number one, don't click in anywhere. Sometimes it's better just to close the whole page or maybe even restart your computer. Medicare and health insurance, that has been a big thing where you are going to have some kind of health professional that is impersonating a Medicare or Medicaid representative. And they will call you and ask you for personal information. And my suggestion to you is hang up. And if you do think that you maybe have waiting for a phone call from someone, call the phone number and the resource that you have and ask them, did you just try to call me and offer me the assistance because I have been waiting for a phone call? And if they say, yes, we were, then that's a confirmation and it's going to give you a peace of mind knowing that you double checked to make sure. And if they say, no, we did not call, then that is your confirmation knowing that this was a scam. Mail and in-person scams, those are happening all the time. I can't tell you how much mail I get that is scam. Homeowners and reverse mortgage, insurance from my mortgage offers to help me pay my taxes 
offers to help me refinance my mortgage, uh, fake contractors sometimes going door to door and offering services. My recommendation to you is unless you know the name of that contractor, unless you truly need something, what I have had my clients do, especially because it pertains to their home and pertains to their mortgage, they take a picture of the letter in the envelope and they send it to me. And I invite you to do the same thing. If you ever get something and you're not sure and it pertains to your home and your mortgage, please take a picture and send it to me. You can text it to me. You can email it to me. And I'm more than happy to help you and say, yep, this looks legitimate. Or you know what? This looks like fake, but let's do some more research. So I'm more than happy to help you. But again, don't do anything right away. And if the people are going door to door, and if you see someone at your door and you don't know who they are, then don't open the door. So, and then if it's something important, they will leave you a flyer or information, and then you can take a look at it later from, you know, from the comfort of your home without anyone just standing there and looking to have a conversation with you. Funeral and cemetery scams are very much scary where the strangers are, may even attend the funerals and prey on the widow or, or widower at the time of grief when they're most vulnerable. And you know, this is where the money extortion can happen. And just that's just terrible. My recommendation is if this is something that you may have to deal with, make sure that you are working with a reputable funeral home and the service that they offer and rely on them to help you and guide you through the process. So how do you protect yourself? I already mentioned a couple of simple steps that you can do. Right. So number one, don't answer the phone from a number you don't recognize. And if you are afraid of missing a phone number or you're missing, you, you're going to miss a phone call. If it's something that is truly important, that person is going to leave a voicemail and they will leave a message for you. And then you can just listen to the message and then make a decision if this is someone you want to return a phone call. If you're talking to someone and they just sound unprofessional, hang up. Right. That should be a red flag to you that. You know, it's if it's a broken language or, you know, they're calling you from the IRS, you know that that's not um, that's a scam. Uh, tech companies do not monitor millions of computers in use today. So Microsoft is not going to call you. Apple is not going to call you. So just be aware that tech companies do not call. If you have issue, you reach out to their tech support and then they will explain to you how they can help you and what technology they use, and they will ask for your permission to make sure that you feel comfortable. Block solicitations. You can always opt out of commercial mail by going to optoutprescreen.com. And for phone calls, you can request to be put on a do not call list. This is the address for you. However, what I can tell you is that it does slow down the amount of calls that you get, but yet you're, you will still continue to get them, okay? Next. Call your family or someone that you can trust and ask them for advice before you act. Ask them, say, hey, I just got a phone call from this number. They said there is an issue. Do you know anything about this? Do you think it's real? And take the time to do some research. Nothing is such an emergency that you have to act on it right now. You always have the time to take a deep breath and to do the research and to reach out to someone. How do you do research? Let's say you have a phone number that your government agency called from. My suggestion is take that phone number, put it in Google, type in the name of the company or a product name or something else in the browser, and then also add such, review, such words such as review or complaint or scam. And you'll be able to see if there's other people who received a scam call from the same number. And that will give you a peace of mind knowing that you did the right thing by hanging up. Do not make any upfront payments, deposit strange checks, wire money back, or send anything. And this also has to do with when you hire a contractor, right? No reputable contractor is going to ask you to pay for the job 100% upfront. Typically, what you should be seeing is a request for a quarter payment or a deposit or maybe a third of the payment. Some contractors may ask for maybe half up front and then the rest is going to be due when the job is completed. If someone is asking you to pay everything up front, or they say, well, listen, how about we do this? Uh, I'm gonna give you a check for this amount, but then you need to give me the difference back because you know it's too much and it's a company check. 
So things like that and trust your intuition, right? That first thought that comes to your mind after you got the phone call or you met with someone and the first thought is that does not sound right. Trust that thought and that feeling because your intuition is never going to lead you wrong. Be skeptical about free trial offers. Make sure that you research the company, its reputation. And this is where Google and research is going to be helpful because if someone else out there had that issue and they posted somewhere online, you're going to be able to see it. And then again, it's going to give you the validation the point that you, you've done the right thing. Check your smartphone settings for, to modify your privacy options and to enable call blocking features. Do, you know, I don't have the instructions for you because all of us have used different phones. However, you can always, again, research the, this information online, or you can call your phone carrier and ask them to help you. Go in a store and say, can you show me how do I create privacy options and enable phone call blocking features on my phone so that way I can protect myself? And you can, also, you can write down the steps, and then you can also help others as well. Don't call phone numbers listed in the letter, text, or email. Do your research and verify to make sure that this is a true phone number that is associated with the company that you're trying to call before you actually make the phone call. And of course, create a script for yourself and put it next to your phone. You can say, hey, I'm sorry, I can't talk right now, I'm busy, and so forth, and then just hang up. Okay, there's nothing wrong with hanging up on someone that you don't feel is being professional and just sounds shady. How do we protect ourselves? A couple of other suggestions for you. CompleteID.com is a service that is being offered. Uh, and then if you are a member of Costco that does have exclusive discounts, Eversafe is a web-based service that helps you monitor daily for suspicious activity. You can sign up for free scam alerts that are from the government if you would like. Uh, Multi-factor authentication when available on websites and apps. What that means is that when you are logging into your bank, sometimes they're going to say, well, we're going to send a text message to your phone and you need to add that code before we allow you to log in to, to look at your information. And a lot of the times it is cumbersome and you have to do that extra step, yet it is an extra step for your protection. So I never minded. I actually appreciate it. And it's something that you can turn on for many websites. They'll ask you, would you like to enable a multi-factor authentication for your account? And a lot of the times I say yes, because that's an extra step to protect myself. Keeping a useful list phone numbers to call. This way, if you get flustered or anxious because you get that email or a phone call or a text message from someone and you need to act on it and you need to figure out if it's correct. Have a notepad or a notebook or a list of uh, your banks and the police and adult protective services, these important phone numbers hanging and ready so that way you can make that phone call and do your research. If you think it's a scam, again, that's what we're talking about is Trusting your intuition, most likely it's going to be. So trust that first thought that comes to you when you get that phone call or that mail comes. Make copies of your IDs, credit cards, and passport. This is something that I, I also strongly believe in when you're traveling. If you're going to see someone, whether it's within the United States or you're going overseas, if, God forbid, your, no, your bag gets stolen, you still have copies of your documents so that way you can call your credit card company and put a freeze on it. And you have a copy of your passport so that way you can go to the embassy if you're outside of the United States and they will issue you something else that you can use to come back to the US and get a new passport. Before making any donations, if you want to verify that the charity is legitimate and what kind of business it's in, you can go to charitynavigator.com to validate and see what that charity mission is all about and if it's aligns with your own values as well. So if the scam happened and unfortunately you fell for it, here are some suggestions for you. So number one, the, the one, the most important thing to realize that you are not alone and it has happened with a lot of people before you. Okay, so please don't be embarrassed. There are, there are agencies, there's companies. You can talk about it with someone that you can trust. Okay, they are, you're not alone and people are here around to help you. So if it's your computer, 
take it to the professional technical support as soon as you can. Best Buy's Geek Squad, Staples, Office Depot, or if you are working remotely and your company offers some kind of tech support, definitely reach out to them right away and tell them it's an emergency. Or if you have family members who are savvy with technology, it can help you. You want to make sure that your computer gets cleaned and scrubbed and there's no malware or virus that is on it. Check your bank accounts immediately for fraudulent charges and contact your bank immediately. Just let them know this is what happened and that they need to put a note on the account to be uh, aware and just to, to monitor things. I actually did that two weeks ago when I was making some reservations for airline tickets. And when I made the reservation, it just looked really strange to me. So I contacted American Express and I told them, I said, I have two charges that I am very suspicious about. I just need you to monitor this to make sure that I don't get a charge on my account because it should not have happened. And they said, not a problem. They actually sent me an email saying that these things are being monitored right now. And then they sent me another email stating that the charges have not actually been posted. The money has not been transferred from American Express to this company and everything is in good shape. And that gave me peace of mind knowing that there was something else, another company that was watching my back to make sure that I was protected. Report the scam to your local police department. Just understand that this is on a larger national scale. Most likely nothing is going to happen yet. It's still a good idea because there's an agency there that is taking this information, compiling the statistics that then can be used for, uh, for the protection and designing new programs to help combat uh, the, the amounts of scam that are out there. I have some phone numbers here for you listed on who you can call and also reaching out to some of the local government agents to help out is also helpful because they have a lot of resources and they have uh, helpers that are standing by to talk you, to talk to you and to help you deal with it. They probably will have a game plan. Maybe someone can come out to help you and or you can schedule an appointment and come out and talk to someone as well. So I hope that you found this information helpful and that's why I definitely need your contact information so that way I can share the slides with you so that way you can use this booklet as a resource. So we are happy to answer any of your questions privately if you would like to call us and if you have any mail or something else that you have received that you would like for me to take a look at, I'm always there for you and always happy to help. The recordings for a lot of our workshops, including this one, are all housed on our YouTube channel. So you can head out and visit us at Penn Jersey Living and the replay is going to be posted there as well. And then you can also check out some of our other senior resource webinars as well. So that's what I have to share with you today. And what I wanted to ask you is, has anyone ever had to deal with a scam or maybe something that came along recently that you saw that you would like to share? Jess mentions in the chat that a news article came out from 6ABC that said that he should forward the unwanted text messages to 7726, and it's going to help your carrier to take action. The article also mentions in some cases that you should not respond stop, even if it's an option. They said that it's better to just block the number and delete the message. Yes, that's true, because sometimes they'll say, you know, type stop to unsubscribe from this list. But if you don't know what that list is and it looks like a scam, just by you replying to that message could be an issue as well. Anyone else can think of anything else? I hope that you found this information helpful.
All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And again, please reach out if you have any specific questions or if you want to talk to us in private. We are happy to point you in the right direction or provide you the resources or answer any questions. And we will see you next week for another class. Let's see next week, what do we have? Nothing next week, but we have a class coming up and we are doing something every, just about every week. And the next class that we have is starting up in August and we are doing a decluttering workshop. So if this is a topic of interest to you, we are happy to have you join. It's always a very popular topic and we have a lot of fun. So thank you so much again. Have a wonderful day and have a wonderful weekend. Stay cool and then we'll see you next time. Have a good one.